What's up guys, it's Prabhdeep here with channel Ace Pants and today we're going to talk about preload, afterload, end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. We're going to talk about the importance differences and their definitions. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so we know cardiac cycle is divided into two phases, diastolic and systolic. During diastole, the atrium contracts to push the blood into the ventricle and the ventral in return relaxes to accommodate for all the volume coming in. Now at the end of diastole, all the blood that's accumulated in the ventricle is referred to as the end diastolic volume. And normally this ranges around 120 ml. Now, as I mentioned before, the ventricle has to relax and stretch out nicely to make it easier for the atrium to pump blood into the ventricle. Now this stretch felt by the ventricle at the end of diastole is called the preload. At this point, the ventricle is ready to pump the blood out into the periphery. And this is done in the second phase of the cardiac cycle called the systole. In this phase, the atrium relaxes and the ventricle contracts to push the blood out. Now the force that it needs to contract to push the blood out is called afterload. And the afterload is affected by the diameter of the pulmonary arteries and the aorta. Let's say the aorta becomes vasoconstricted and the diameter of the vessel decreases, that's going to make the heart's job harder. It's going to have to pump much harder create a lot more pressure to pump the blood out. That's what happens when we have atherosclerosis in blood vessels and it narrows down the diameter of the vessels and, it need, and the, the heart needs to work harder to push the blood out. Let's say on the other hand, patient has vasodilation from something like, from pathology like sepsis, then it's gonna be easier for the heart to pump the blood out, but there is an issue here. The pressure is gonna be decreased. Because the pressure is decreased, that blood that's being put out is not going to reach the peripheral organs in the manner we want it to. And it results in hypoperfusion and hypotension. But we'll discuss this more in detail in later videos. Now once the heart has fully contracted, there's always some residual volume left behind. And this residual volume is referred to as end systolic volume. Now the normal end systolic volume is about 50 ml. Now that we know that how much volume we begin with and how much we end with, we can calculate the difference and that's how much blood is being put out per beat. So we know end diastolic volume, which is initial volume, is 120 ml, and we know we're left with 50 ml, which is the end systolic volume, then the difference between them is 70 ml. And that 70 ml is referred to the stroke volume. Stroke volume is how much blood is being put out per beat. And we'll talk about stroke volume as well in another video when we talk about cardiac output. So in summary, Preload and afterload refer to the pressure felt by the myocytes during relaxation and contraction. Many people confuse preload and afterload for referring to the volume at the end of the systole and diastole, but that's not the case as we have just learned. So make sure you guys know the difference. Guys, I highly recommend that you guys go over basic cardiac physiology before starting clinical medicine because cardiology is very complex and if you don't know your basics, it's just going to get more complicated. So I highly recommend you go through this uh, before starting cardiology. I'm going to make a few more videos covering cardiac physiology before moving on to cardiac pathologies and pharmacology. So make sure you check them out. And uh, yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned something new today. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for future videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. See you guys soon.